But now we will start with the first science comedian of the second half, and it's a physicist again! Oh my god, yes, it's a physicist. Please, a very warm welcome for Freya Blackburn! Yes. Hello. I will uh, immediately open this as a physicist by telling you that it's no use at all to look for dark matter. You should instead look for n equals 1 or n equals 2 supersymmetry, preferably displaced. <laughs> <laughs> this already gives you some idea of what the physicists are like. Um, when I say I'm a physicist, people usually say things like, Oh, Einstein. <laughs> Oh, Sheldon of the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Personally, I like, oh, practically everybody in the rock band Queen, who are also <laughs> scientists, and they're physicists, with PhDs. So, one of the things I want to talk about is the fact where I work, and I am yet another physicist who works at the Super Duper Particle Accelerator in Geneva at CERN. And I am here to convince you that this is an extremely sexy machine. It's sexy. <laughs> and uh, the reason why it's sexy, I think, can best be explained by computational... Linguistics. Linguistics, exactly. <laughs> really, computational ling linguistics explains this best. Because it turns out that the Large Hadron Collider, which is the official name, of course, of the Super Duper uh, Collider in Geneva, actually, when you put this in PowerPoint, in Comic Sans, it will automatically autocorrect to the large Hardon Collider. <laughs> really, I have been in presentations where uh, King Bumibol of Thailand was there together with Sarkozy, and the CERN director was there talking about the large Hardon Collider on this. <laughs> uh, maybe Hollande would have been better, he would have understood. <laughs> and one of the things that I think is very interesting is that that this kind of science is sexy, and people talk about this as big science, it's inspirational, it's the reason why people study science. And I think that's true, but I do think that you need to think a bit about how an accelerator like that really works. And an accelerator like the Large Hadron Collider is a bit like a sports car. But, so people, well, that's, that's what people say, it's like a sports car. If I talk to a journalist, I say, yeah, it's like a Formula One car. There's only one of it, it's unique. It occasionally breaks down. <laughs> or it's high tech, it's like a Tesla. <laughs> but it's really more like my car at home, actually. Sort of shiny on the outside, but with a lot of old stuff <laughs> inside. And let me explain to you why that is. Uh, at CERN, we actually recycle our accelerators. So this means that when you uh, use the Large Hadron Collider, you are also using all the previous colliders we were using from the 1950s onwards. So that means when you put particles in the Large Hadron Collider, the first accelerator they will see is an accelerator built in the 1950s. This was when there wasn't even TV, really. <laughs> Now after that, we go to the 1960s, next collider. So slightly faster, slightly higher tech. The, the 1960s is sort of when, well, yeah, let's say, when the art in the Brussels metro was considered cutting edge. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, after that, of course, we then continue. And uh, then we actually reused a tunnel, but not an accelerator. So we ripped out the previous accelerator and put it a new one in a tunnel from the 1980s, which strangely enough is not in neon paint. It's really good, yeah. So, and then after that, we have finally put our particles in the Large Hadron Collider. And this is when we start colliding. And we collide a lot. <laughs> we collide 24 hours a day, every week, all year, also at Christmas. <laughs> the French complain about this, but it's okay. It's a multinational project. There's people who don't celebrate Christmas. It's wonderful. And uh, so that means that every day of the year we collide 40 million times per second. Now you think 40 million times per second. That's a lot. Huh? That's like the number of updates on like Taylor Swift's Instagram feeds. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's sort of true, but for us this is too much. So we cannot really 
process all these collisions. So we have to throw them away. So what we do is we, around, at the, around these collision points, we build a big detector. It's like a digital camera. These digital cameras are sort of, well, yeah, they're pretty fancy machines, they're huge. But they really are like a digital camera. Part of it is really CCD technology, so it's very similar to the camera in your phone. Except that it is about 80 million pixels, so 80 megapixels. Oh no, so 80 gigapixels. So, um, and it takes photos 40 million times per second. On top of that, these detectors are also really, really heavy. To give you some idea, the detector I use, so the camera I use, weighs 40,000, 14,000 tons. So we are still trying to build a selfie stick, so that'd be... <laughs> and uh, it will be a while, but this will be one of the next things that we will produce soon after the World Wide Web and uh, touch screens, the, the megaton selfie stick. <laughs> so, let me see what else I was going to talk about. Oh, yes. And um, uh, when these accelerators are running, we look at all these collisions, but we cannot really look at them all because there's really very many. So most of them we throw away. In the end, we only save about, from every 40 million collisions, every second, we only save about 500. That's still a lot of photos. And these photos we then analyze. And that's really what I do together with my team at the VUB. We analyze these collisions and look for new particles. I can tell you one of the new particles I look for is supersymmetry particles, but uh, my colleague Professor Loretti, who you also just saw, he looks uh, for dark matter particles. But in principle, the idea is to say, the strategy of this kind of analysis is we throw away everything. <laughs> but there is science behind us, throwing away everything. We throw away everything we know. So that means I recognize this collision. Get it out. Hey, Higgs boson, that's nice, old news. Get it out. <laughs> so after you do that for about two years, you are looking for, and then in the end, you are left with one collision. And you go like, fantastic, I found one collision. This is great, this is new physics. And then your colleagues say, well, that's not statistically significant. <laughs> okay. So, you continue, and you take another two years worth of data, and you throw away, you throw away, you throw away uh, events. And you started to feel a bit like uh, the guy from The Sopranos, like Tony Soprano, who's this guy who really works in waste management, or really not. It's not very clear, but he definitely throws away a lot, and he does something else as well. So that's sort of what you feel like. And finally, after two extra years of data taking, you have then found another set of, part, uh, of collisions. So say you have found 10 other collisions. So first you had one, then you had 10. It's like, fantastic, this is definitely statistically significant. I'm in business. I'm booking my tickets to Stockholm. <laughs> it's got to be ready. The students are happy bringing out the champagne. It's, uh, this is going to be fantastic. As we're already posing our, planning our pose victory. And then we found out, because we say, well, maybe we should look, take a look at these collisions a bit further along. And then we find out that all of these collisions were taken when the detector was half off. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you very much.